Despite Prince Rupert looking like a softie and coming from a ridiculously rich family the man was really ambitious. By age 14 the German prince had already joined the military. Aged 23, he was appointed commander of the Royalist Cavalry during the English Civil War. Even though Prince Rupert was also inventor, artist, and a few other things, it was his fighting skills and warrior spirit that made him stand out. For the record, he was that good of a warrior that his enemies believed, at some point that he had supernatural powers and couldn't be killed. Vlad was born in 1431 in Transylvania, the central region of modern-day Romania, and ruled for many years. Very few people in history have cast more terror into the human heart as Vlad the Impaler, or as he's better known, Dracula. Vlad's victories over the invading Ottoman Empire were celebrated throughout Europe and it is recorded that even Pope Pius II was impressed by his skill and fighting spirit. He showed no mercy to his enemies, whom he impaled on the stake. Saladin became the first Sultan of Syria and Egypt in 1175. He was trained by his uncle. In the early days of his military career, Saladin united the Arab forces. He personally led all the major military campaigns. Under Saladin's command, his army defeated the Crusaders at the decisive Battle of Hattin in 1187. Before his death in 1193, the generous Sultan had given away a lot of his wealth to the poor. Richard was King of England, later known as the Iron Heart, and famous for his exploits in the Third Crusade. He led his own army from the age of 16, starting with putting down rebellions for his father. He is described as an extremely skilled warrior who showed no mercy to his enemies and his most famous attribute was his courage and daring. Sia Hodun was a military general serving under the warlord Kao Kao and helped him conquer over and over again. When he was 13, he killed a man just for insulting his teacher. He became a legend when during a battle he was hit by arrow and lost his left eye. In front of his amazed soldiers and enemies, he pulled out the arrow and swallowed his own eyeball. Flama was a Roman soldier and hero who fought in the First Punic War. Flama led 300 volunteer soldiers into Carthage on a rescue mission. A mission that ended with his men dead in a pile of blood and guts. He was at the bottom of the pile injured. Flama was then taken prisoner and sent to gladiator school. He won his freedom four times, and every single time, he declined it in exchange for just one more fight. Flama was killed in his 22nd arena fight. He was 30. Despite the fact that many believe that Achilles is just myth, we cannot dispute the fact that this is one of the most famous warriors for every man of today. According to legend, Achilles was extraordinarily strong, courageous and loyal, but he had one weak spot, Achilles' heel. He was a hero of the Trojan War, the greatest of all the Greek warriors. Achilles' most notable feat during the Trojan War was the slaying of the Trojan prince Hector outside the gates of Troy. Galvarino was a famous Maypitch warrior during the majority of the early part of the Iroko War. He fought Spanish invaders and was taken prisoner along with 150 other brave warriors, and had both hands cut off then released as a lesson and warning for the rest of the Indians. Not discouraged Galvarino decided to lead another attack on Spanish. He tied blades to his stumps and went into battle with swords for hands. After a hard battle he was recaptured. Spanish governor executed him by throwing to the dogs. George Castriot known as Skanderbeg was military commander who led a rebellion against the Ottoman Empire in what is today Albania, North Macedonia, Montenegro and Serbia. His military skills presented a major obstacle to Ottoman expansion, and he was considered by many in Western Europe to be a model of Christian resistance against Muslims. For 25 years, from 1443 to 1468, Skanderbeg's 10,000-man army marched through Ottoman territory winning against consistently larger and better supplied Ottoman forces. Born in 1584, this Japanese samurai is undoubtedly one of the greatest warriors to have ever walked on earth. By the time he was 13, Miyamoto Mashashi was traveling across Japan challenging some of the finest swordsmen of the era to a duel. Miyamoto won more than 60 duels throughout his life, and never suffered a defeat. He died with his cane in one hand and his sword in the other. Undoubtedly the most famous and skilled gladiator who ever lived, 
Spartacus, along with Crixus, Danicus, was one of the slave leaders in the Third Servile War. No other individual terrorized the powerful Republic the way he did. He is one of the greatest warriors not only because of his strength and war capabilities, but also for his courage and compassion. He was killed in a battle in 71 BC. Leonidas was a warrior king of the Greek city-state of Sparta. He is best known for his heroic military adventures at the Battle of Thermopylae during the second invasion by the Persians in 480 BC. He's remembered best for his unmatched boldness and fearless character. And rumor has it that during the end of the Battle of Thermopylae he remained alone fighting against hundreds of thousands of Persians before he was killed. Khalid ibn al-Walid was an army commander under his military leadership that Arabia, for the first time in history, was united under a single political entity, the Caliphate. Khalid fought around 200 battles, both major battles and minor skirmishes as well as single duels, during his military career. Having remained undefeated, he is considered by some scholars to be one of the finest military generals in history. Genghis Khan's childhood was fundamental in his rise to power. From an early age, he was ruthless in the protection of his family and his dismissal of outsiders. He was a fearless, great warrior and skilled archer from childhood and he personally participated in many battles. Genghis Khan came from nothing, united Mongolian tribes and conquered more territory than any warlord in history. His army killed over 40 million people, which at that time was 10% of the world's population. Alexander the Great is arguably the greatest warrior of all time. He spent much of his early years under the tutelage of Aristotle. He remained undefeated and took over every major kingdom of his day. His empire spread from Greece to India, conquering Persia, Syria, the Balkans, Egypt and many other regions. Alexander the Great fought on the front lines of almost every battle unlike many other kings who just watched their troops fighting, 